While the folks at the campfire cook-off were putting their finishing touches to their dishes, it was time for me to see what else was cooking up at the festival. Bringing to life its theme, which was Think Global, Taste Local, the Food and Wine Festival had over 70 exhibitors there you could grab a taste from and see some of the top local chefs in action. Now I heard some of your dishes in your restaurants in Puerto Rico are have rum in it. Talk to me about some of those dishes. Well, I'll tell you, one of the ones we do a lot is uh, we have a double cut pork chop with uh, a reduction of uh, dark rum, star anise, cinnamon, demi-glaze, and you get all those spices of the Caribbean in there with a nice hint of the rum in there. That's one of the most popular. Also, we have a whole fried fish. Uh, Creole style, and we do a what we call mojito isleño, which although it has the word mojito in it, uh, is not related to the uh, traditional Cuban rum, and it is a more of a uh, like Louisiana Creole sauce. Only that in our case, it has cilantro, capers, and olives, and uh, we add some rum to it, aged rum to it, and it gives it like another dimension, which is really really super nice to dip the fried fish in. Now I just tasted that rum gazpacho, which is just delicious. Oh, thank you. Tell me, is there is there a secret to it? Can you? Can you give no, us a little? I, I give you I give you the whole scoop. Sure, I'll give you the whole good, scoop. Good, well, good. essentially, it's about, if you have a blender in 20 minutes, a little bit of mango pulp, uh, onions, garlic, cucumbers, following in the traditional uh, tomato gazpacho. And then we put some vinegar, a little sugar, balance it out. We use a little tarragon on this, but you can use cilantro, you can use basil. And uh, I was telling some of the uh, people who went to the booth that you could drink it as is, as I served it, or with the local Maryland crab, it's a great combination. Oh, yeah. Plus, if you like chips and salsa, it could be a great thing where you take diced mangoes, diced cucumbers, uh, ch uh, red onions, jalapenos, and fold that in into the gazpacho as it is made, and really makes a great chip salsa experience. I always ask all the chefs that I interview, what do you love about cooking? What is it about cooking that makes you come back every day? Well, I, I, I think there's two things. In, in the beginning, the love for food became, or, or came to me uh, uh, for the love of, of manual involvement in the whole deal. But I got to tell you that it's just a tremendous outlet for me, my creativity. Uh, plus, in and, and the social aspect, you get to meet so many people. And uh, I tell you one little detail, you know, if you're an architect, which is a wonderful profession you got to wait until they build that whole thing to get congratulated you know here you sort of like make your recipe come out to the dining room and people are you know either liking it loving it or not liking it. so you get a more of an instant gratification so I think it's a combination of things hi ladies hey, hey how are happening? you I know I know where are you going you can't leave hi. so are you having a great time at the yeah. first annual it's, food and wine festival yeah, here at the national today you're being a wino <laughs> We'll, we'll edit that out. Oh, you will? Oh, please we don't. will edit that out. But have you had a chance to sample some of the wines here? Yes, fabulous. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't this a great? I have one complaint. What? They don't take credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't bring enough cash. Is that what you're saying? Wow. So you have to take the card if you want to order it. You know. Sure, sure. But this is great. They should have this more of it. This is great. Where yeah. are you from? I am from Metro. I'm. Well, see, you're making me do. You, you can't, can't interview. You can't interview I you. You're great. Well, thank You're you so much. Too. Thank you so much. You have a great time. Well, I got wind that one of my favorite local chefs was down at the North Tent causing a big stir. And there he was, Michelle Richard, owner and culinary master of Citronelle. Big friend, but I'm not, I'm too soft to understand him. He's like me when I speak English. I'm the only one who able to uh, are able to understand what I'm saying. He is as hearty and delightful as his food, keeping us at the edge of our seats by throwing morsels of his signature treat and sharing almost all his secrets in his new book. Now you just made a really simple dish inside. <laughs> Tell me, what kind of what what pokes your brain when you when you start making some creations in the kitchen? Well, I try to create. Uh, some new dishes in the kitchen. I try to make it very, very simple and delicious to keep the, the natural flavor of, like, like today I did the grapes, mm -hmm. seedless grape with, uh, you know, coated with chocolate, 
and adds a little bit of love at the end. Mm. That makes it delicious. Huh? Yes, it yeah, was. It's so simple. It's easy to make. Not only do you make simple dishes, but you have some signature dishes that have been following you for the years now. Talk to me about some of the signature dishes that you've brought from California that you've bring up. Ah, happy in the kitchen. Is that true? Yeah, how, happy, how fitting. I mean, most of the dishes are inside of my book. Okay. They're inside my book. But if I want to talk, I come up with, uh, with one beautiful dishes. It's a big plate with different slices of meat or fish, like a carpaccio. Normally when you go to a place and you, you order a carpaccio, you only have one kind of meat. In my restaurant, if you come, we have like six or seven different kinds of meat. You have beef, you have tuna, you have vegetable. It's absolutely delicious. It's a bouquet of flavors. Yes, it's and I delicious. love that, a bouquet yeah, of flavors, flavors, yes. It's delicious. And you have another one, we call it be begula pasta. Mm. It looks like exactly like a we see caviar, big caviar, but it's made with pasta. And it's a big supra. We serve like the, we serve it inside of a can of caviar. A can. It looks like a caviar can. And people just dip it. Dip it and they've discovered lobster mm -hmm. and some something crunchy mm. and an egg, a poached egg. It's just they love it. Mm. We've been doing that for five or six years. So you truly are happy in the kitchen. Very happy. Very, Very happy. happy. Because you know every every night we have a fiesta, people are coming to my restaurant. And they are paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I that know. Good, that Isn't good. that great? And then the beautiful lady like you, after eating my food, you know what they do? They have the boyfriend to pay for, they have the, the husband to pay for, and they give me a big kiss. <laughs> this is, what? Oh, that's why I'm happy. Are you going to kiss me before you go? Mm, thank you, sweetie. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, it was time for me to get my head focused back on the festival, where people were having a great time sampling wines from near and far and tasting dishes that use local ingredients from both land and sea. Chef, tell me, what, what are we preparing here today for the people? Well, we have some uh, Virginia oysters baked with white truffle potatoes and cream corn. Mm. And then we have our Moon Bay Love Story, which is a uh, California roll made with fresh crab meat and it has a spicy conch and tobiko custard on top. Real beer lovers don't go away because I'm slurping on purpose, all coming up next on Metro Cuisine. <laughs>